So guys, what is a simple way to detect the direction for the current day? Okay, now there are so many different ways to do this, but in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you one very, very simple way, and we're gonna be using the Asian range. Now, to begin with, the first thing that I would recommend is having some kind of indicator that will mark out the Asian range for you. I often get asked what this indicator that I'm using right here is. So let me show you. You just type in Asia and it's this Asian range and kill zones by RJG Trader. Okay. Um, this is a very, very cool tool just because it maps out visually without painting over the screen too much and kind of stays out of your way. I just find it a much easier way of doing things. Now I've changed the colors slightly, but by default, I'm pretty sure that uh, the Asian range is still going to look like this. These blue blo uh, boxes, these blue boxes here are basically the Asian range. Okay. So the whole strategy is based off when the Asian range direction changes. Um, and so what does that mean? Well, if we reference it back to typical market structure, first and foremost, generally the rule of thumb for me is the longer a trend has been going on, I know a lot of people trade it in terms of, okay, well, if the trend has been going on for ages, then it's clearly a very well-established trend. Therefore, I'm going to wait for a pullback and I'm going to wait for it to continue. My philosophy generally is that, you know, because the FX markets don't move in straight lines, in fact, no market moves in straight lines, um, eventually, uh, the longer a trend has actually been going on, often the less likely it is to continue. And so for me, this is the type of scenario, obviously, in theory, where I would not really be that interested anymore in looking for buy opportunities most of the time. Now, that is my personal style. Some people may, you know, not like that. And that's completely fine. Um but when we begin to change direction or give evidence that we may be beginning to change direction, that is going to be, you know, even if price did, you know, break down and then look like it's going back up again, the probabilities, in my opinion, are at a higher, um, at a higher rate here or here. Uh, because we are closer to, you know, assuming that the trend did continue down, we're closer to the beginning of that trend. And therefore, we are in more of an oversold technically, I don't really like that term, but technically more of an oversold condition. And therefore it adds more confluence to our position to potentially be going bearish. Now there's tons of different ways of doing this. I've shown you this with market structure right here, but you can use the same concept if you find market structure difficult and just apply it to the Asian range. Because instead of looking at, okay, we're making you know structural highs and lows and all this sort of stuff and we've got to kind of monitor them and define them in the right way instead we can simply have you know let's just say an asian range box is here asian range box is here we're literally just comparing the current asian range where it closed in comparison to the previous and what we're specifically looking for is we're looking for higher low higher high if we're looking for it to go up and vice versa okay then when we begin going down let's just say i know the kind of time scale doesn't really make sense but now if we have this, if this Asian range closes lower after we've been going upwards, this is what validates this next day, this following day, which let's just say is here. Okay, maybe a box is going to be a bit confusing there, but let's just say the next Asian range is here. So during this period here, this next day, after we've had that first change in Asian range direction, then that is going to be where we can potentially look for this day as a short setup. Now, typically what's going to happen during this day is it's either going to take out the high of the Asian range and go lower, maybe it even comes up here, and you can use traditional methods of understanding where price is going to go. Maybe we have a level marked out over here, over here, over here, whatever. Um, or we just look for uh, liquidity sweeps of the Asian high. Sometimes it's not going to do that. Sometimes it's just going to mess around and it's going to come out of Asia and maybe comes up a little bit and it just kind of chops around and goes lower all day. These are all different possibilities of what uh, of what might happen. And so that is going to be our responsibility in terms of understanding what is most likely and how we can read things in a relatively systematic way. So we don't have to worry about having things absolutely perfect straight out the gate. OK, so mm, let's look at some examples of this um, in real time. So. Mm, Right, let's just go a little bit to the left and then we'll work our way around okay so asian ranges are going higher okay we're creating higher highs and higher lows in terms of the asian range 
Here we've created a higher high and a lower low, but because this hasn't been a significant change in direction, meaning we haven't created both a lower high and a lower low, I'm just going to uh, see this as a continuation, but that doesn't mean that I trade that day. I'm only looking for where it shifts in direction. We get that this next day because we've made a lower Asian high and a lower Asian low. And then the rest of that day, you can see was pretty much bearish, at least during the major sessions. I know that you can't see these little lines here. This, the indicator only goes back so far. But um, if it was, it would be around about here because you can see when it starts going up, that's towards the end of the day, around 6 p.m. ish in UK time. OK, so then we've been going down this when we have this kind of inside Asian range, which is inside the previous, yes, it's not too bearish previously, uh, pre sorry, not two bearish days in a row, but because the last day was a bearish one, the last one that was significant, this I would still count as bearish. And so it's not until here that we shift from that bearish tone into bullish because it's significantly higher, 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 uh, higher, higher, higher low. Then this day here becomes bullish for us and you can see this was a very nice example okay so we continue going next this isn't a tradable day this isn't a tradable day according to these rules then we have a nice clean lower low and lower high asian range then what do we do after this well now we have an example of that liquidity sweep up here okay very aggressive one and then we begin breaking down and this day would have been bearish for us okay um Lower, low, lower, high Asian range. I'm just going to call it a lower Asian range, lower Asian range, and then a higher Asian range followed by a tradable bullish day right here. So out of all of these days, the tradable ones would be right here. Just in case there was any confusion with what I was doing. Um, right here, this would have been the bearish day. Uh, we go bearish, bearish, bullish. So this day this day here uh, da, da, da. I think these are all the ones that we marked out so you can see that these days these are all nice examples it won't always look this clean and this perfect but typically this is a very very nice and simple tool okay because you are using and referencing very specific points in time day after day and it leaves much less up to the decision making process now that we've established that direction the question is okay well how do we begin to look at places to get involved now for me my favorite place to start is always going to be on the four hour time frame okay so we've still got these areas marked out here okay at the beginning of these sessions what i'm really looking for is i'm looking at okay well where are we in relationship to some kind of consolidation or previous consolidatory type level okay so what the hell does that mean okay so typically there's one or two ways to do this. The first one is the consolidatory method, like I just said, or the second one is going to be momentum structure. Okay. Now, typically momentum structure is going to be arguably in these kind of conditions will probably work best. Um, but just, I like to have both options open. I don't just want to pick one over the other, et cetera. Um, and so right here, we can see that we've had this previous consolidatory area over here. Okay. Kind of chopping around, going up, down, left, right, et cetera. Right. Now, this is going to be an area where volume has been building, okay? And so when we look at this and we look at where we started, let's just say we started around here because this is 6 o'clock, we can see that we are at this level over here, okay? Okay, and specifically, it looks like we have kind of, it's quite difficult to see here. Okay, so we haven't fully broken out of it, but after the close of the 6 a.m. candle, the 10 a.m., we still have this bearish movement right here and so basically for me at least following this approach this would have been the beginning of the area where we could have looked for cells until we see any kind of counter movement or the end of the day whichever one happens first in this case we know that you know i'm not trading at 6 p.m so this little window would have been just fine for me um you might be looking at this going oh this is so small this looks tiny yes it does look tiny but you've got to keep in mind this is the four hour and that's still 50 pips. Like the average day on most pairs is going to be, you know, at least a clean move is not going to be that much more than 50 pips. It's easy to look at these days like this and think that this is normal, but this is not normal. Okay. There are many, many variables that come into it. And so you need to really approach it from a smart perspective. 
Now, the second approach, if you don't like that approach, or if you just want something to combine with this next approach, then this is going to be very, very helpful. Momentum structure. So momentum structure is literally just candle structure. And candle structure is basically where we are just applying these same rules of lower highs and uh, lower lows or higher highs and higher lows to candle highs and lows instead of structural highs and lows where we're going like this this would be an example of structural highs we have structural lows structural highs and then structural lows um, instead of that we're going to be applying those same rules to the candle highs and lows so for example we're always comparing the candle to the previous candle okay so for example we're going up here so from this point we break past this previous candle high this these become the lows Okay, then this becomes the low, then we break down, then we begin monitoring the highs because we monitor the highs as we go down and the lows as we go up. And we continue to go down and we can see for this whole day we've been bearish. And so we treat each candle, each four hour candle in this case, um, because it's intraday, so the daily wouldn't really make sense, um, as a reference point as to what the range is going to be. And what do we expect? Well, we expect that momentum to continue. And so essentially this becomes the top of the range that we are monitoring. And so as we came into six, um, AM on this day, this would have still been the top of the range because this is the last closed candle and this is therefore our reference point. And therefore, when we close here, you can see the structure of the candle. When we come down, we form the wick and then we begin going up into the close. And then the next uh, beginning of the candle, we tend to see the uh, manipulation move. Then we have a nice little move down here. This would have actually got us in a little bit earlier around about here. Okay. So in this case, this would have been okay for us. Okay. We would have been getting in around about here. We look at what this looks like on the 30 minute. Yeah, so you can see basically from this point onwards, we have a little move down, we have a retrace. Then you can begin, begin applying some of the normal principles, maybe looking at some horizontal levels, whether you're zoomed out or not. Or you can look at just traditional, you know, order blocks, supply and demand levels, whatever the hell you want to call them. Um, you know, ultimately just variations of the exact same thing. Um, and just all those normal kind of ways, okay? Same thing is true over here. Nice little blocks over here. And these are just nice examples. You know, they might not always look this clean and that's fine. That's why we manage risk because we are just aiming to be consistent with our method so that over time we begin to, um, uh, we begin to really improve, okay? So let's look at this next day over here. Okay, so if we're looking at horizontal levels, we can see that we've broken out of this area right here, okay, with this candle. So basically from 10 a.m. onwards, this looks like it would have been very, very nice. Let's just say that we hadn't looked at that for whatever reason. We just looked at momentum structure. The same thing is true, um, just for a different reason, because we broke out of that previous candle high right here. In fact, we were already bullish. We hadn't really changed um, since down here. So we changed to bullish right here. Okay, so we could have technically just followed that momentum um, after we got the signal here. It would have basically provided us with the exact same information. And you can see here, we have high, high being made. We begin to retrace into the close. Then we have the retrace. Then we have the continuation. And it's critical when looking at momentum structure that you understand what you're looking at with candles. Because if you have a candle, let's just say that this is a bullish candle right here. And you have a wick like this on either side. What you were looking at here, if you were to break this down and what this looks like structurally on a lower time frame, it would look like this. We have the open here, which is what this is. Then we have the manipulation move at the beginning of the candle, which creates the low. Then we go up and we make a high, which is up here. Then before the close, we typically come down and we retrace at least a little bit down to where we close. So then when the next candle opens, Okay. When the next candle opens, we don't just fly up normally. We normally have that same manipulation manipulation move. Now, sometimes it's going to be really, really short. Sometimes it's going to be here. And on occasion, it won't exist at all. And that's fine because there are no absolutes in this game. Okay. It is just a game of probabilities. But most of the time, it's going to continue. Why? Because it makes sense according to normal structure. Because look, we make a higher high. Then when we come down, we continue to go down after we've opened on that new candle, then we have the move. Then the same thing repeats itself. This is the open, which is also the close of the previous candle with the manipulation move. We have the high, and then we come back down to some kind of a close. 
This is why candle structure works because we are just looking at normal structure. You could even make the opposite argument. This is why normal market structure works because ultimately we're dealing with candlestick charts. And so if you can read a candlestick on the higher time frame, other than just using it as an entry confirmation tool, it is going to be very, very useful for you. Okay. Um, and so here we can see the same sort of thing. All this uh, time we were bullish as soon as a candle closes on this time frame then we can just mark out a new range specifically what i mean by that is you know this would be the low but then when this candle closes this becomes the low when this candle closes this becomes the low the reference point that we can follow etc okay same thing is true over here okay so in this case this day was uh trying to be bearish or we were seeing it as a bearish day and yet the four hour momentum structure was bullish so what do we do do we wait do we change around well for me personally um i'm happy to look at a nice little level and just trade this down because i know that overall i'm following the rules of my direction or using the asian range over the actual structure here okay now that might be a little bit confusing given what i've just said here um, and so if it is, then don't worry, just ignore days like these because you just want all your rules to align. And it's much better that you practice the skill of being able to sit there and master and wait for your perfect setup. That's much better. But as you get a little bit more advanced, you can basically deduce what you think is more likely. And in this case, according to the Asian range, which is where 90% of the direction is coming from, that said that we were bearish. And so here I would normally just see it as a deeper discount. Okay. Similar thing happens over here to what we saw over here. We're still bullish via momentum structure or depending on whether we've marked out levels or not, that would have also been okay, okay? But that's pretty much it, guys, okay? It's a very, very simple approach to identify direction, then just applying some of those normal principles, okay? Because ultimately, we have direction, levels, and entry, Okay, so for direction, we've already got it done. We've done the Asian range, the Asian range method, which I discussed at the beginning. Levels, you could, it doesn't really matter what level you pick. As long as you have some kind of consistent way to mark out levels, no matter what level you pick, there are always going to be examples where it doesn't work and you're tempted to change to something else. But that is what makes it difficult. Okay, so you must just stick with one thing. It's not that, oh, this way is the best and this other way is the worst. Because even when you find the quote unquote best, there'll be another best thing that you want to chase. Okay, and that is just unfortunately the nature um, of our minds. Okay, so levels and then entry entry is just confirmation of what direction the levels are telling you okay it can be anything it can be wyckoff it can be candle patterns it can be lower time frame candle structure lower time frame moving average crossover um you know tons of different stuff lower time frame structure rate whatever it is at the end of the day it all comes down to personal preference uh, an easy tool to reduce losses is not to go down too far on your entry time frame in relationship to your higher time frame. So in this case, we were using the four hour lot to look at that momentum structure and stuff like that. Um, so you don't want to be going down to the one minute if you're not very, very comfortable and know what you're doing. Because typically, the lower down you go, the more mistakes you open yourself up to, which means more losses, which means it takes much longer to do well. And you'll often discount the entire performance of the whole strategy rather than just judging the specific entry method. Okay, so I hope that that has made sense to you guys. Um, I have got um, the analysis group coming um, in the next, probably next few days. I know I said that last time, but uh, there's just been some a few complications, but that's coming uh, very, very soon. So I hope that you were looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.